Welcome to this Zentangle Quickie. My name is Heather Hartwick Ladden. I'm a certified Zentangle teacher. And today we're going to take a look at the Tangle box spirals from CZT Margaret Bremner. Well, this is a, it's a nice Tangle. It's been around for quite some time. And um, I just decided to add it. Uh, because uh, today I, I uh, had a uh, my Zentangle Essentials class classes where we you, where we focus on the method that is Zentangle. And just so you know, if you are interested, if you've never taken, I don't like to call it a beginner or a one on one class uh, because we have a lot of people that come back as a refresher to stay grounded in understanding uh, the methodology and philosophy behind uh, Zentangle. Um, and I wanted to, to mix some things up a little bit, and so I decided to add this instead of uh, doing print on. And it turned out really neat. So, um, oh, I was like, where was I going with that? What I was going, if you've not taken any type of, if you've never taken a class where they focus on the method of Zentangle, uh, in the description section you'll find a link to my website. Uh, there you'll see my classes, but on the fifth Tuesday, of every month, and that happens about four times a year, I think, uh, is when I'm going to be doing the Zentangle Essentials. So um, follow me on Facebook. Uh, there's some other places in the classes link on my website where you can follow me to see when I post things. But uh, I highly, whether it's for me or somebody else, I highly encourage taking that just to understand the the philosophy and everything that's behind all of the the beautiful work and uh, and neat things behind Zentangle. So, all right, this one, it, it's just so cool. It's a spiral. Now you can start this either way. Um, for instance, from the inside or the outside. So uh, well, let me start one here on the outside. So if you, you see however far your pen wants to take that, and it's just, you know, straight line and you're making a box and then you're auraing to the inside of that box just as far as you are able to go. Now you can also do this on the inside. And what's fun is, so do one one way and then, okay, let me do one on the inside. So starting small and going bigger. Well, let's go one more round. <laughs> and what's nice is you can stop wherever you want, up to you. And what I like to do, because this is one where, uh, it, just like everything is entangled, it's completely, everything is completely up to you. But you can pack these together tightly. You can just kind of leave them loose, hanging all around, completely up to you. I'm going to do a little bit of both here. And so it depends on which direction I'm going. If I want to, if I know what size I want to fit in and which direction, so let's put one here, then I might start on the outside because you might be asking yourself, well, which is better? It's whatever works in your head better, <laughs> number one. But if you want to do something like this where um, you might want to hollow bow it, put, put one behind. Okay, I'm going to do one. Now, let's see, let me... I'm going to start over here because that would be just a ginormous one. So let's put one here. And I'm going to start from the inside because I'd like to put one underneath, but it's much easier, I am finding, to do it starting from the inside. So uh, whatever angle I want to be at, I don't know. It's that angle. It's whatever angle that my paper is at at the moment. Now, you don't have to, I'm, I'm telling myself, you don't have to do this all in one stroke and not pick up your pen because sometimes you want to be able to see where you're hollow bowing, right? So if you're doing something like this, you might want to pick up your pen and turn it so that way you can see that. Oh, I can go right over that. But just like regular hollow bow, it is helpful to, to continue your pen as if you're drawing, but you can always go back and it's like, okay, here's this one. Okay, that one would be about here. And let's just do this one more. Or I could, oh no, let's, uh, 
Now I'll end it there. And then I'm going to put another one in here. You know, and what's fun is, too, <laughs> it doesn't have to be exactly square. It can be a little wonky. Wonky is nice. I'm going to leave that one there. So what's neat is, too, like we would do with print humps, so I have this gap. You could leave it if you want, or you can fill it in. Just depends on what, you know, outcome you want. Filling it in is nice because, as you can see, it pops the other things. Oh, let's see. Let's put one. Oh, let's go right. Ooh, could do one right here. Do a, uh, Then that's going to match that. Oh, I don't know. Okay, let's go. This is my biggest problem. Challenge. Period. Zentangle or no zentangle. Deciding what to do. No, I take that back. No, it's just Zentangle. <laughs> I'm going to leave that one. Oh, no, no, I'm going to go one more. Because I want to have that out a little bit. There we go. And if you're filling in the little gaps, highly recommend doing it as you go. Because I have found that it's hard to go back and figure out where, where is that a gap or is that part of the box? Oh, let's put one in right here. You know, you could also, as I'm doing, as I'm doing now, not necessarily intentionally, um, but you could play with the distance in between, um, you know, your, your auras, your uh, times around. That is kind of fun. I'm going to extend this one here and fill in this little gap. Oops, and then there's one right here. But it's just fun because this is one you could totally lose yourself in because it's like, oh, I don't know where to stop. Someone take my pen. <laughs> I don't know what to, where, to, where to end. <laughs> but that is it. You just put them however you want. They don't even have to be clustered like that necessarily. So do take a look at the For More Inspiration link for that reason so you can have more inspiration I am going to put I'll put two links there one is to Tangle Patterns because that's where I found it and then just um, for simplicity you can you can find the link in the Tangle Patterns but I'm going to I'm going to link directly also to um, to Margaret's uh, blog uh, again just for ease now as we were having fun with this today Here's, there are several ways that you could shade this. One is, so if you put them in a cluster, then what I would recommend is where they're overlapping. I mean, and you could just take it outside if you want. I might do that with this. I don't know. Put some graphite on the outside. Well, let's just take this one all the way because this one is... Oh, this uh, this must have been the first one I did. Sometimes I recommend finding that first one and then shade around it. See how that just popped that one right off. Let's see. And this, well, this one we've kind of ended in between, so I'm not sure... Where that one goes, well, I'll just put some graphite there anyway. Let's just go like that. Yeah, there, that's interesting. Because it looks like they're intertwined. Okay, and let's just do the rest of these. Oops. <laughs> I have a lot of graphite on this tortillon, so I'm using kind of what's left on it. And see, whoops, there we go. See how that just, it creates uh, three dimensions out of that. And if you, if you filled in more, and so you had more of this dark area behind, just imagine. Oops, I didn't do that one. Neat. All right, now something else you can do, and I'm going to do this, let's do uh, maybe with these outside ones, is, and I'm just going to do this side. 
Well, we'll do it with some of these. Kind of just, and you saw I just scribbled the, the graphite and now I'm spreading it out with the tortillon. Just kind of making them, oh, and I could do that with this one, even though it's hiding, but just kind of going halfway with them. Decided I'm going to go darker right in that center. Mm-hmm. Super neat. You could do it, you know, have it be on the top. It just depends on, uh, depends on what you want to do. And that is what is so fun about Zentangle. Ah, uh, really cool. Really cool tangle. All right. Oh, you know, and let me just show you, since, since I had mentioned my Zentangle Essentials class, this was one that we did and so you see I and, well and then here too you can see filling it in a section and then filling in all of the gaps versus you know just filling in in the center it's it's just a different look and then here too this I had them kind of spilling out it's just so much fun and uh yeah super neat fun fun tangle and it's really it's a tangulation and, and linda explains this on the tangle pattern site uh, it's like a tangulation and i would say tangulation of, of print tops in it's the spiral but zentangle had um uh, two patterns called ambler and a mingle and they're more of a box uh type spiral uh or also called a fret which i'll have to read up about that uh, uh, i had heard it before Mar um, Linda mentions it here on her blog, and so you can read uh, more about that if you wish. So, if you like this, and I hope you did, I uh, hope you click the like button. And then also, while you're clicking, if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, would love to have you be a subscriber. Uh, I mentioned the description box. I always do my own version of the step out, so you'll find that, plus the links I already mentioned. Um, as well, you know, I mentioned my website. Facebook page. So if you follow me on Facebook, if you happen to be on Facebook, then when I post classes, you will see that. And, and anything else that I post, I'll, I'll post recaps and, 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 you know, who knows what else. But also, if you'd like to be a part of the conversation beyond just things that are posted, we would love to have you. I have a Tangle Addicts community uh, private group. And there are four questions that you must answer in order to gain entry. Uh, so again, if you want to be part of the conversation and fun, um, we would love to have you. Uh, let's see what else do I mention. I think that that's probably that's that's close to it. If you watch well, if you watch every day, I don't like to necessarily record things and have things seem canned. Um, I also try to do these just on one take. Every once in a while, I have to redo something, um, but I like it to be uh, to be genuine. So I have fun. I hope you have fun. <laughs> so with that, thanks so much for watching and I wish you happy tangling. <laughs>